Hello and welcome to this Red Gaming Tech video myself, Amata, where as always I'm here with the latest from the tech world in the last 24 or so hours. We are going to keep things off today with a bit of mobile news as we have a very interesting announcement from Samsung. And some of you undoubtedly know what I'm about to say, and they have announced the Galaxy Fold, the very first folding display smartphone, which is actually its key feature. In terms of its specifications, it actually has exactly the same specs as the much-awaited Galaxy S10, which was also announced at this particular event. So, as I said, it has the same specs as the S10, but what are those specs in case you miss them? Well, inside we see an octa-core Qualcomm Snapdragon 855, we see 12 gigs of RAM and 512 gigs of storage, in terms of the display size, it is a 4.6 inch Super AMOLED, 7.3 inch QXGA plus Dynamic AMOLED, and we also see Android 9 as standard. In terms of the camera, we see for the back facing, we see 16 megapixels ultra wide angle and a 12 megapixel wide angle and a 12 megapixel telephoto, and for the front facing camera, we see two. 10 megapixels and 8 megapixel at 3D depths, so pretty damn nice camera indeed. But of course, the main flagship feature of this device is that it basically is like a tablet that you can fit in your phone as it has a foldable 7.3 inch main screen. Which is actually really, really interesting. I mean, obviously, the tablets are great. They're much better, say, a long train journey, for instance. You can load up a couple of videos or something on there just to watch for a, a, you know, a, a long journey or something like that. I myself did that several times when I travelled to, say, Nottingham, for instance, which is a really long journey on the train. But the main sticking for this point is... State main sticking point, should I say, sorry, is actually the price. And you might want to brace yourself a little bit because it is $1,980 or 2,000 euros, which is just... I'm sorry? Like, when I saw the price, I was just like, excuse me? Surely there's like a decimal place or a typo error or something going on. Nope. It is literally almost $2,000. It is basically $2,000. Let's just be real. It is not far off at all. So, yeah. Not exactly going to be for the lower end. Which is fine if that's what you're going for. But we have seen with the iPhone X, for example, that there is definitely a limit of how much people are willing to pay for brand loyalty, for having the latest and greatest phone, and this is way beyond what Apple were charging for the iPhone X. Obviously, it is a, it is a sort of neat feature, it is a bit of a gimmick feature, and obviously it does have some pretty nice specs inside the device, but this is crazy, this is like a month's rent for a lot of people, in fact, over a month's rent, probably more value than some people's cars, so, yeah. I don't think this is going to sell a huge amount, but I don't think Samsung are really expecting it to at this price tag, but it is still pretty nuts. Obviously, any new technology is going to be expensive. I bring up this point a lot, but DVD players were really, really expensive when they first came out, so like 4K television, stuff like that. So the tech that's gone into this might become less expensive as we go uh, further into it. So this first iteration is definitely going to be for, obviously very well off people, let's just put it that way, it's not going to be for the average person, because I can't even imagine the contract that you'd have to have for this thing, like 60 quid a month or something stupid, I don't even know, because even an S9, which I actually was looking at for my new phone when I was like, going to upgrade, was like 45 quid a month, and I was just like, uh, no, thank you, I'm I'm going to go, go, go with no on that one. Anyway, let's move on, shall we, to NVIDIA. And no, for once, this isn't about the 1660 tile, but it is about a GTX card, the GTX 1650. And apparently this has been confirmed by the sources of videocards.com, and they basically said that they are indeed planning to launch another GTX Touring card by the name of GTX 1650. And... Like the 1660 Ti is not going to have ray tracing cores, but it is going to have Turing shaders and is basically going to be an answer to the GTX 1050. Now, interestingly, following this, there was also a tweet from Tom Apisak, whose name should be very familiar to you at this point, and he tweeted the specs of the card, or at least one of the specs, should I say, as he mentioned a base clock of 
1485, so 1485 megahertz. And the other specs that have been reported as well is that we're going to be seeing 4 gigabytes of VRAM that's either going to be GDDR5 or GDDR6. I would fully expect to see GDDR6 on this model as that we, what we have seen on all Turing cards so far, but of course we will have to wait and see for confirmation on this one. But of course we are also expecting the launch of the 1660 tie very shortly and that actually kind of leads into our next topic from AMD as they are of course very aware that the 1660 tie is going to be launching well tomorrow and in preparation for this they are slashing the price of the RX Vega 56. And this pretty much confirms that the 1660 tie is a thing because well why else would they cut the price to about $300 or £250 respectively. It is pretty much, at least in my mind, very clearly a direct challenge to the GTX 1660 Ti, which apparently is going to be costing about $279. So they are obviously trying to basically be in the exact same market as this particular card and again, challenging it directly. But that's at least according to these reports. These prices have not actually gone live yet, but there are rumours according to PC Games N that we're going to be seeing price cuts for this card, and of course we're going to be seeing these deals go live most likely tomorrow at the launch of the 1660 tire, assuming that it does indeed happen. But our next topic is actually regarding Intel, as they have confirmed something rather interesting. So, the something interesting is that Intel have confirmed that non-volatile MRAM is being produced at high yield. And some of you might have a question mark if you heard going MRAM, I've literally never heard of it. Well, basically it's an up and coming memory tech that has data retention without power and it also has high speed and high endurance abilities. And again, it is currently being produced with high yield. So, we could see things such as, well, DRAM replaced. Now, they've actually given an update to this tech at the International Solid State Circuits Conference, and basically, this tech can store data for up to 10 years without any power available, and this time frame can even be extended by storing the chip in a cool temperature controlled environment. So basically, we could very much see this technology replace NAND, Flash, and DRAM. But at present, Intel is producing this on its 22nm FinFET process, but at the moment, yield rates are very, very high indeed, greater than 99.9%. One of the real downsides is tech, however, because unfortunately everything does tend to have a downside. MRAM does require error correcting code that take up extra space on a die and consume energy. But it's going to be a couple of years before commercial products using MRAM are promoted publicly and undoubtedly Intel are going to be working on improvements between then and now. And of course, even though it does have that error correcting code issue, it is still going to be pretty damn high efficiency and obviously high speed and the fact that it doesn't have to have power to retain data is potentially huge. Now the only issue I can see just from the image that they have shared which you have undoubtedly noticed on screen is that well you potentially could have capacity issues because you see NAND flash is kind of down the bottom of this memory capacity chart and the MRAM entry is kind of put in nearer the top so that undoubtedly is going to improve so it's not going to replace NAND flash I think from the get-go but it potentially could in the future but it's not too far above DRAM on this particular chart, so we'll have to see what happens, but I am definitely interested. So, that is me done for this video. Thank you so much for watching. Your support, as always, is highly appreciated. Do remember to like and subscribe if you haven't done so already. It does help out a great deal, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.